All right, so let's start, let's start with a few things. Um, and, and these are some things that we talked about, that I talked about before when I got up and we talked a little bit about evangelism. How do we, how do we, how do we get a conversation going about Jesus? How do we make things, uh, how do we make things happen for ourselves? And by the way, we're not, we don't do it for us. We do it for God. We do it for the kingdom. But more importantly, well, when we counted the costs and we came forward and we had our, you know, we got baptized, we were all of a sudden given the responsibility and no, you don't got to, you get to talk to people about Jesus, right? So now that that's it, we say, okay, well, how do I get started? What do I do? How do I, you know, because that's, I'm not a talker. I don't say nothing to anybody. I don't know. How do I get going here? Well, this is what we're going to talk. This is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with one huge component, and that is, huh, what's your story? What's your story? You see, one of the simplest, most effective ways of opening a discussion with somebody about the gospel is telling your story. And uh, most people have this uh, this huge fear, right? That um, there's only you know. Oh my goodness, you. I can't possibly ever be smart like you and know all there is to know about the Bible. And well, uh, well, here's a secret: you don't have to know every little thing. You do have to study. So when you get when you get uh, pre uh, presented a question about the gospel or Jesus or or being or salvation, you better darn well be able to answer it. But no, you don't have to be the super smartest person in the world to figure it out. But your story actually helps in getting someone to understand that, oh, well, if that guy can figure it out or that lady can figure it out, I think I probably can too. But it, take, it, it takes a little work to even develop your story. And, and basically, there are only two stories that you have to even consider. Yourself. And me, I, I'm one of those people that, so my story part one. My story, uh, I find myself blessed. I grew up in a household where um, the person that taught me the gospel was somebody that was taught personally by Marshall Keeble. Uh, and Marshall Keeble, if, if you are not very familiar with the Church of Christ, is a, a and, and he would not be, uh, rest his soul, he would not consider himself one, but he was basically a legend. This man in a very segregated south, southern United States preached and taught and converted thousands of people, right? And I, I had the, the, the privilege of growing up in a house next to the house of my, my preacher, Frank McElveen, who taught me. And it was just a natural thing as I got a little bit older and as they started giving me um, the idea that, oh, okay, well, you know, as soon as you figure it out, oh, why do, why do we need to do this? And we're sitting in church and we're watching people and they're going in the water and they're coming out of water. And I'm like, oh, what's, what's this all about? And, I'm, and as time goes by, I figure it out. And by the way, I had to answer that question when he asked me, why do you want to do it? And actually, it was one week he was away. He was actually away, and uh, his, his uh, brother-in-law, Arthur Guest, that brother could preach also, um, said, all right, well, McAfee is gone. What do, you, what do you want, basically? And I said, well, no, I want to be baptized today. And he said, why? I said, well, for the remission of my sin. What's the remission of my sin? It's to take them take him all away. So I come on up here, boy, and, we, and I went in the water. So... The uh, the process itself was pretty vanilla because, like I said, I went to, I went to Bible I went to Bible study every week, every Wednesday, every vacation Bible stuff, every vacation Bible school. Um, hey, we got some people coming over to the house. Come on next door. I know you ain't doing nothing. So I got that. I got a nice, healthy dose of the gospel when you know growing up. But then there's also the second story because see, there's always the story of how you got in and the story of how I kind of wandered away a little bit and what, how I made the comeback. Because we grow older and we get this, we get this uh, whole idea of self and how we don't need anybody else other than us. I can figure it out on my own. And yes, I fell, I fell away. My, I fell away. You can't fall far once you know the truth. And once you know, you can't go back to not knowing. But um, 
yeah, I found my way, I found my way back, and I found my way back strong, okay? And, um, and it actually mostly happened when I was here in Connecticut. Because one day, and it was not too long after I, not too long after I married my lovely wife, um, I was having some, I was having some personal, and, and you, know, you get down. Sometimes you know something's missing, right? You ever had that feeling? Something, something, something's gone, and I miss something. And what do I? How can I? You know, what do I fix? And, and she, one day she was talking, and by the way, she's been around some things, and but she said, you know, I don't know what it is. But you need to find something. You need to figure something out, whether it's church, whether it's whatever. And so here, so, and I had no idea of, of Northside. I didn't know about anything else. I just knew that somewhere close was this nice little place in Farmington. And I started coming. And I started getting fed. And I started being, uh, I started being just loved on by a lot of people in here that to this day I, I owe such a, 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 a debt of gratitude because they're the reasons that, and again, I can't ever put it all on myself that I was the one that brought myself back to Christ, but when you're around a bunch of loving souls that just care so much about you through all the, the, the awesome great things that have happened in my life and for some of the little disappointments, I've had a lot of love, and that's just reflective of Christ, right? So um, isn't that simple how to tell a story? And we all have that within us that we can talk a little bit about, you know, how how you got to, you know, how you got to Christ or how you got back to Christ. I want to take you to um, and I'm going to read a little bit of, uh, of an account because, again, sometimes people just say, well, you know, my, my life is so boring. My life is so whatever. And I'm, no, you don't. It, it, that's not the. That's not the picture. Okay, that's not the idea. The idea is there's something in you that makes someone sit and watch you and say, "Well, wow, yeah, okay, I think I can do that." And um, there's no. I think that there's no a greater no greater account of a soup of a of a believer than what we see in Paul's personal or the Apostle Paul's personal account of him. And um, I know this is, well, this is going to take a few, let's, let's go to Acts chapter 6. So this is the earliest form of somebody telling his, telling his story, right? So uh, Acts chapter 22, I'm sorry, in verse 6. It said, but, as it, but it happened that as I was on my way, and by the way, Paul, the apostle Paul at the time was named Saul of Tarsus, and he was just an incredible persecutor of the Christian church. I mean, and he mentions, I bound him up and I... You know, he had, he was, he was there at the stoning of Stephen. He got, people died because of this guy's zeal for persecuting Christians. So, but it happened that I, as I was on my way approaching Damascus about noontime, a very bright light suddenly flashed from heaven all around me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus the Nazarene whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me saw the light to, uh, to be sure, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, get up and go into Damascus. And there you will, you will be told of all that you will be told of all that has been appointed for you to do. But since I could not see because of the blindness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and came into Damascus. A certain Ananias, a man who was a devout, who was devout by the standard of the law and well spoken by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing near me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very time, I looked up and he said, the God of our fathers has appointed you to know that his, his will and to see the righteous one and to hear an utterance from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to all men of what you have seen and heard. Now, why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. So this is somebody that became the big, one of the biggest uh, the the biggest preachers he's the biggest cheerleader he's the biggest everything for the cause of christ 
And even he had a, a, a way of saying, oh, you know, the, things are so bad for me and I got, and he told, but he told this story to a bunch of people that just, for the most part, they're not, they're not really accepting of anything. They're not accepting of his, of what he has. To, actually, they are. He's, he's writing to a Christian church, but he's telling his story and he, and I am telling you now that your ability to communicate what Christ has done for you is going to be one of those things that's going to help you really move forward in this earth and in, in, in this time and in this day and age. All right? So um, the second thing is, and this too is an important thing, it's how are your people skills? Listen to what I'm saying now. How are your people skills? And some people say, well, no, I should just be able to tell them how it is and that, that's it. And uh, yeah, but I want you to think about this. What kind of results are we getting? What kind of results are we getting when we say, when we say okay, I, yeah, I've shared the gospel. And a lot of times our version of sharing the gospel is saying, you are bad, you are wrong. Your your mama your mama the Baptist was wrong. Your daddy the Presbyterian was wrong, and, and it does and it while it does matter the doctrine that they what the doctrines that they learn are, people tend to dig in when the more we tell them something about you know, the more we tell them about themselves. Can anybody get? Can I get a witness there? Is everybody can everybody agree that that happens? And it doesn't even that and in that instance that it doesn't even necessarily have to be talking to people about the gospel or the Bible. Believe me, because there are many times that I have, you know, I've like told my wife, even, oh, you're wrong, you're wrong. And first of all, she was most, li most often right. But the, second, but the second thing is sometimes you, there's just no way, you know, some people are just gonna just melt and say, oh yeah, I see your point. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. I think I'm gonna follow you. No. It doesn't work that way. So one of the things that we have to do is we have to work hard at being better with uh, communicating to people. And um, I want us to go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. And we're going to look at verse 19 through 23. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. All right, and so, and uh, Paul writes to the Corinthian church, for though, I, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all so that I may win more. To the Jews I became as a Jew so that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law as under the law, though not being myself under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without, the, without law as without law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so I, might miss, so I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I might, by all means may save some. Now, it, it, so it's not saying that if I hang out in nightclubs, if I hang out in brothels, if I hang out in some other places where people who are not doing right, no, it's not saying that. But, what it, but the word, the 20th century and 21st century word that we use for that is empathy. We gotta catch people where they are, when they are, and we've gotta be able to talk to them and not at them. Got it. So one of the one of the things that continually frustrates me when I when I hear people talk about uh, you know when people say oh, okay well you know I'm just gonna tell these people and I'm you're just gonna find people and you're gonna start inundating them with stuff telling them how their mother was wrong for being a Catholic and their and again I say that doctrine that's some stuff we can figure out once we can get them to study the Bible with you right but. We have such a, uh, we in general, the, the royal we, we have this thing where we are so big at telling people how wrong they are that they're not going to listen. They're going to turn you off just as quick as. And I had a, I had a mentor that said, hey, you know, um, I would, I, the, my mentor said, I take really seriously that, you know, I give some, I 
if I'm the one that turns somebody off to the gospel, how that's going to affect me when I sit in front of the judgment seat. Because you honestly think about it, because you don't have to be buying into the, the stuff that they're into, but with a little, with a lot of compassion and a lot of love and a lot of patience, man, we're people will follow you. People will listen to you, even if they just say, well, no, you know what, Every, everything else is, I'm liking doing things my way, but you know what, you're a positive person, you're a loving person, you're, I need to be around you sometimes, and believe me, there are people that are pretty, diff sometimes are pretty difficult to love, sometimes pretty difficult to be around, some people, some, you know, it's tough to get along with even, but they find something, they can possibly find something in you if you shot, let your light shine and you're that person that you know is somebody worth following towards Christ try to stay avoid some of these things that keep us away you know that have nothing to do with your salvation and right off the very top and let's uh, um, we're going to go to Philippians we're going to go to Philippians chapter 3 and uh, the verses are 20 and uh, 20 and 21 so Philippians 3, 20, and 21. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. Y'all, we got to not... And we've got to not find ways to alienate people when the, when the number one focus, when the number one thing is getting them to talk about Jesus. All right? Helping them find the Lord's church. That means that we need to stay away from talk like politics. We have citizenship, we have citizenship in God's kingdom, so we need to stay away from that. All right. Later on, you know, once there, you know, once you and you have and you realize that there's some things that you have philosophically in common about all of that stuff. Great, do that. But when you're trying to, when we're trying to get people fixed on and focused on Christ, man, that's just another one of those roadblocks that we put in front of ourselves to make sure that people aren't going to follow you. Do we? Do are we? Are we following me here? Do, do, do I make any sense? Okay. The other thing is, and this is another thing that we tend to do, and we get all, when we get extra familiar, we do things that uh, they're pretty insensitive, they're pretty insulting, and we push it off as politically correct. I'm going to say it again: we push it off as politically correct, y'all. We got to get that. We got to get those terms because those are not those are not biblical terms. Our terms are uh, the the ter things that we talk about is preach teach and love so even when we say even we say some kind of off-color thing and we think that it's uh you know oh that's pretty cool because this person is pretty cool now and you wonder why this person doesn't show up again for you or why this person has uh, uh some a kind of little contempt because now uh after you they've shown the after they've seen the real you uh they're not going to buy into anything else you have to say about anything you know, let alone Christ. So try to keep it on in terms of per, uh, your personal relationship with them, not who their, you know, what their background is, and you know where their where their family comes from, or what their education level is, or just any of that, what their their gender, or any of that, because that again is not helpful in bringing in bringing souls towards Christ. Okay. Um, and you got to, uh, I said it before, but we have to have patience. Sometimes we get really frustrated with people when they talk, when they talk to you, right? They, they, oh man, I can't believe this person's so dumb. And they, people make the best decisions with the information that they have. I'm going to say that again. People make the very best decisions with the information that they have. We might, uh, some of us have come from some of those denominations or some of those, or we've been around people in those denominations. We go, what? You've got to be outside your mind to be saying some stuff like that. But 
they truly believe the, these things and the only way that you can kind of counterbalance that is well first of all pa love patience empathy and uh, oh get this sort of practice I want you to I want you guys to practice something you don't have to, we don't have to do it out loud now I was thinking about asking you and saying hey we, let's let's practice this but um, we had a we had a preacher here Jerry Tallman thanks for the, thanks for the hookup Gordon uh, I couldn't remember his name for a second but Jerry Tallman came and he had this 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 book you know on um, on how to you know, basically on how to help people figure out God's plan of salvation right and one, there are two things that I that I have found to be effective at least to not have people deflect you or push you off or to, um, when they ask you a question when people ask you a question when people ask you a question your answer you don't focus on don't uh, don't get zeroed in on answering that question in a two-word sentence right away the answer uh, and this is again a suggestion if you want to do it do it if not eh, well, you know get, keep getting what you're getting but um, Jerry was head suggest you say something like, hey you know that's an interesting question let's get together and have a Bible study <laughs> let's get together and have a Bible study with and now we say, okay, I, I have acknowledged your question. You have a question. Now you know this person's even as, you have now an idea that this person's a seeker. So now you say, okay, well, I got an opportunity. Now we, we're, we can talk about this a little bit. Get that, you know, and we get the Bible study. And I'm going to go a little further with what to do once we get there, because that's next, that's part of, that's going to be the next step. But uh, the other thing is when someone says something about what I do, how I do, what my parents believe, what my grandpa believed, you know, I never saw it that I, I never thought of that. That's an interesting statement. Let's get together and have a Bible study. Now, which which uh, rhetorical question? Which sounds better? You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Versus, hey, that's interesting. Let's have a Bible study. And I'm not telling you to say you believe it. Oh no, but I am saying. Hey, that's interesting. And by the way, when people say something like way out there and left you way out there, it is interesting, isn't it? Right? So take the, take the time and say, okay, yeah, that's it. And now, they're, and now they're willing to have a conversation. And they're willing to have a dialogue. They're willing to have a study. But then once they get, uh, now, and once we get there, the next thing, the next step is, the next thing is, are you prepared? And now that you have this now you you got this bible study with this person now you are able to get some of their time whether it's a half hour an hour or whatever stay on well stay on topic uh also make sure that we're, we're make sure that all during the while you're studying your bible so you have an idea study your bible beforehand you already know before you have that study together you know the question you know the statement you know the comment that they made there are two things there are th a, a bevy of things that we can do to make sure that we have a, a good productive study with that person so imagine this one we, we jumped in Google and started like reading verses and other things about this but you know about the particular topic but then the second thing is if you don't have one find a mentor I have identified the person that is bringing me that's still bringing me along um, and I, I go to this person as, you know, as often as I can when I have questions and actually I have a couple now but, but I have one primarily that I go to and I say you know what I, I've been thinking about this and this person will tell me if I'm you know hey man that's, that's kind of stupid by the way you, you, your mentor can kind of say man you're kind of nuts you're, you're kind of out there stop that or, because they're going to give you the tough love that you need they're going to give you the but they're going to give you the advice and they're going to give you the help that you need to move on so don't think that you have to tackle it on your own Say, hey, all right, this is pretty cool. I, you know, I, I got this. I got some help from my person, and I got my help. I got some help because I've been studying the Bible. And oh, let's not forget, we're going to pray and we're going to meditate on these things as well. We're going to pray and we're going to meditate because if not, what's going to happen is all your thoughts are going to come out all jumbled up, and you're not going to and you're not going to say anything really effective to help anything out. Um, and uh, now that you've so now that you put your resources together. Um, you know, don't start going down rabbit holes with the people with you know, with the folks that you're studying with. Stay on your topic. Stay on your you know. Stay on 
this is the question or this was the statement I made. And if something else pops up from that, hey, that's a great question. That's a, or that's a great question. Let's, uh, let's pick out a time that we're going to study this out in our next study. We'll finish this up. And now you have two studies. You have a second Bible study. Same with, I've always been taught that this is how it is when, they're, when you're studying out this one that leads to another thing. Don't go down the rabbit hole because first of all, you don't want to take up all their time because when people start losing interest in you, then they'll, they'll so just say, hey, it's great. Then let's, let's save that one. Let's save this one for our next Bible study. Now there's an expectation. Now they have something, you know, now they have something to be ready for and you have something to prepare for. Is this starting to make sense, guys? Um, and um, you're going to be less likely to lose confidence or, be, or being tripped up by questions if you go deep in your Bible for the answers. So your preparation is going to make all the difference when you're doing it. And by the way, the deeper you get, the, the, you will tend to, as you get deeper into the, the Bible for the answers for those issues that, or the topics that you're dealing with, the more likely they are to just stay on topic for what you have. And hopefully you'll still have a, the opportunity, the ability to figure out what's, what's coming in the next time that you get together. But then finally, the other thing is, are you right? Are you right? Because um, it's incredibly hard to get someone to obey a, the, the gospel of you yourself aren't a living example of what an ambassador to Christ should be. You see, um, God really only expects two basic things from us. Two basic things. He expects us to worship him in spirit and in truth, of course. But he expects our worship and he expects obedience. Right? So, what, this last minute. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Now faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of, of Christ. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Matthew 10, verse 32 says, Therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. And Acts 2, 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And finally, in Revelation 2.10, um, John says, Be faithful to death, and I will give you a crown of life. Now, if you have a prayer request, if you need to get right with God again, if you need to be restored, if you have not, and, and uh, even primarily tonight, today, if you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, today is your day of salvation. Um, I, and I just ask, please, that you just come forward as together we now stand and sing. <laughs>